Well, welcome to the Senate Bar. Now, today it's time to test fire this 1895 Winchester that we just completed a full restoration on. This one's a takedown model in 30-06, and we're really proud of the way that it turned out. Now, I have to apologize in advance. There's probably going to be a bunch of road noise here. We had a uh, solar eclipse this morning, and people came flogging in this country from all over the place, and now they're all heading home, so we're right up behind the shop, so I hate that road noise, but it's also hunting season. We don't really want to go up on the ranch and do a whole bunch of shooting. Um, when we might go up there and do some hunting this afternoon. So anyway, this this is a, a later production uh, made in about 1920, 1895 takedown model. Uh, we went through the, the whole process of restoration. It's got new wood, um, bluing all the way around. Um, did a little bit of mechanical work because these 30-06, and we're going to talk about this a little bit, tend to develop a little bit of headspace. So let's take a little closer look at it and then we'll we'll do a little shooting and just see if we got everything right and she's going to perform the way we expect. So here's a close up just how if you have the time and the patience to hand polish and hand fit wood how good we can make a century old rifle look. Just a beauty. No buffum wheels have touched this rifle. Now this rifle came to us completely bare of any finish. Um, the, the, this is the wood that came on it. Of course we have an added recoil pad here. The fore end was grossly undersized. It has kind of a big divot in it here. So we put new wood on it. Um, and, and this wood came from Precision Gun Works down in, in Texas. They did a nice job. Still takes a lot of fitting. Anytime you, you fit this wood, uh, even 95% inlet, it, it takes a lot to do it right. Leave everything a little bit proud like we did. We fit a shotgun rubber butt on it. And the Schnabel forend, it comes with just a, a kind of a squared off front end. So we had to... to uh, Put the ebony insert in and and form this whole schnabel forend by ourselves and then inlet the the barrel contour really a lot of hours into just the wood on this thing now for the bluing it's a, we want to keep things as original as possible so in following with what winchester did of course winchester rust blued barrels through this period. Now this was made in the 20s, but in the 20s Winchester was using a different kind of bluing for the receivers. And that bluing, if you're familiar with Winchesters, did not um, work well with the metals of the time. And, and so in the 20s we see almost all receivers have some degree of flaking or loss of bluing, even the high condition gun. And this one had absolutely no blue whatsoever. So after the 20s, Winchester went to a, a form of bluing called dew light bluing, which is the earliest uh, caustic type bluing. So this is a little bit early for dew light bluing, but it's the closest thing we could come to that actually would stick to the receiver. And I don't know of anybody who's actually using that process that they used in the 20s because uh, obviously it just didn't work and, and they went away from it. Okay, so we've got on this particular gun, and this wasn't in bad shape, the metal wasn't in bad shape, but it was, it had light dings and light pitting all over it. So this thing is completely, all metal surfaces have been completely hand polished. This did not touch a buffing wheel anywhere. So there's almost 30 hours of hand polishing just in the metal alone. So this, this particular rifle has a tremendous amount of man hours into it to get it to this point. Of course we rust blued the barrel, we've got dew light bluing on the receiver, and then hand fit, hand rubbed finish with a little bit of, of a reddish tint to it. We used a Timberlux finish with, and we added just a little bit of a reddish tint to get more of a factory look. So let's talk a little bit about 30-06 in 1895s and some care we have to take when shooting them. Now as most people are aware, the 30-06 cartridge was introduced in 1906. Hence the nomenclature for, for that particular cartridge, 30 caliber 
06 or 1906. Now, Winchester didn't introduce them in the 1895s until 1909, and they didn't immediately really take off in popularity. The 3040 Craig was the primary cartridge in the, in the domestic uh, 1895 production, and 30-06 started kind of competing with that, but didn't really get popular until after World War I, when there was a glut of military surplus 30-06 ammunition available. So after World War I, in the, between about 1918 and 1926, 30-06 what really took off in popularity in these 1895s. Now, we started seeing some problems arise. Now, with, uh, 1895, the Winchester lists them as a max pressure of about 47,000 PSI. And Elmer Keith and Townsend Whelan were a little more conservative. They, they speculated that about 42 to 43,000 PSI is, is maximum for an 1895. But as the 30-06 ammo started getting loaded up hotter and hotter and hotter, then we started seeing 30-06 1895s developing headspace issues and so it's very very common for 1895s that have been shot with high powered 30-06 ammunition like the modern stuff with headspace issues and this one was no different it, it it really wasn't bad it just had slight headspace back in the primers out just a little bit so we did put in some some uh, fresh locking blocks and we still have a little dishing right around where the uh, primer is on the bolt face. So we expect now that while we don't have a headspace issue per se, that because of that little bit of dishing we might see the primers back out just a little bit. Now the reason I mention this is if if you have a 30-06 1895 it's really safest to shoot low pressure loads through them. Um, you know load light for them. Today's pressures are up around 60,000 psi for 30-06 so if you shoot that in a in a rifle that's designed for just a little over 40,000 PSI, then obviously you're gonna have a problem. Now, the, the, it does have nickel steel barrels, and we're not gonna blow the barrels up, but we're gonna develop that headspace problem. So, if you're gonna use factory ammunition, um, Federal makes this fusion light that's about, about like 3030 ballistics, and that works really well. So I've got some of this that I use when I'm, whenever I'm test firing these, these 30-06-95s. Okay, so this is a bolt for an 1895. This is a locking block. The locking block actually serves a couple of functions. It, one locks up the bolt, of course, and then this portion of it actually helps in the cycling. This is what operates the feed lips that open and, and let a cartridge present itself for the bolt to push it into the chamber. Now, these lock up extremely positively, and they, and they have to because these were some pr very powerful cartridges that the 1895 was chambered in. But the problem is, is with something that creates as much chamber pressure as a, as a full-powered 30-06 round, up around 60,000 PSI, we're peening back the metal on this locking block face. We're also peening back some metal on this bolt face, and of course, any time we're, we're creating more space here, that's creating head space, the distance between the bolt face and the back of the cartridge. Okay, so Winchester recognized this, and by, 18, by 1926, they discontinued the 30 out of the 1895 lineup. Now, they, they still produced 1895s for another four years, but they were only available after 1926 in the 3040 Craig, 303 British. 35 WCF and 405 WCF. Now, the issue isn't so prevalent in the the modern reproductions because they have better steels and it doesn't. It's a harder steel. It doesn't peen back as much as they they do in these. So if you've got like a Morocco and, and 30 out six, they are designed and and will withstand modern 30 out six cartridges. But we need to keep the the pressures down in these old originals. Okay, now in order to fix this headspace, we've got two options. We can either move the bolt forward or move the barrel back, and either is a great option. Now, the 94s, they make reproductions, uh, locking bolts with some different thicknesses. So we can just put a, a new locking bolt in, they're about 50 bucks, and get them in 5, 10, 15 thousandths oversized. And of course, that just pushes that bolt face a little forward 
further forward, takes up the headspace, and we're done. We don't have that with 1895s. Nobody reproduces a, a thicker version of these locking blocks. So one option would be to, to weld up these locking blocks and machine them back. And I don't know that I don't know of anybody that's done that. I'm sure it's been done. Um, it would be quite a process. And then the other option, of course, is to set the barrel back one thread. We take the barrel out, put it in the lathe, turn one more revolution, one more thread into it, then rechamber it. I mean, neither is a great option. So if you've got a, a, an original 30-06 1895, take it easy on it because uh, you don't want to get in a position where you have to fix the headspace issue. Okay, let's let's get to shooting in this one and just see how it's going to do now. Now we don't usually shoot with the cotton gloves on, but when you've put this many hours into making this gun look so pretty, we're gonna we're gonna shoot with them today. Now we're just gonna shoot four rounds. See if we're where we are on target. Make sure everything's functioning correctly. These these rimless cartridges, the 30 out three and the 30 out six, are a little easier to load than the rim cartridges but we still load them basically the same way. Okay, so we're gonna take a shot, see if we're anywhere close with these open sights yet. Okay, let's go down and see what, how we did. Okay, well, looks like we're just a shade low and a, and a shade right and so we're only at about 25 30 yards here but that gets us in the ballpark and we're not going to sight it in completely the the uh, owner of this thing's a shooter so we guessed pretty good on those sights considering we just we put them on as a guess after we reblued the barrel so we'll go ahead and cycle a few more through and just make sure everything's kosher Okay, so we know we're on now. We're going to go ahead and, and cycle the other three through and, and just make sure that everything's working correctly. Perfect. All right. And of course, we have to shoot some milk jugs. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and one more on target. <laughs> wow, she works like a dream. What a wonderful old gun. And now it's pretty too. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today. It's really gratifying when we put this many hours into a restoration project. Comes out looking terrific and functioning terrific as well. Now, we're not taking on any full restorations for the time being. They're just too far behind. But we may be taking them on again in the near future. And that, that's a story for maybe another day. So keep an eye out for that. Well, thanks for joining us today. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.